Hey there once again YouTube. So I was notified by one of my viewers that there's this certain YouTuber who sh hence shall not be named um, who keeps saying that during the magnitude 7.1 which you can see on the seismograph stations at Yellowstone that the professionals were censoring the data to make it look smaller on the web recorders. For example, let's use MCID in this video because I really want to put this out there because something I cannot stand is when someone says, oh, they're censoring seismic data or they're manipulating seismic data. The only way, and I'm telling you right now, the only way you can do that is to shut the station off. But that wouldn't work if it was just one station, right? You'd have to shut off a whole seismic array at the same exact time, right? Okay, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I want you to notice something. Notice how the lines on the web recorder, also known as seismograms, look weaker because of the magnitude 7.1. Apparently, people were saying this is because the professionals want to make everything look smaller. Number one, something to ask yourself. Why in the hell would the professionals want to make things look smaller on the web recorders when web recorders aren't even used for seismological analysis? They're not, guys. They're not at all. They're only for basically quick analysis just to see, okay, how many earthquakes occurred? You know, just, it was there a swarm? Was there a regional earthquake? Was there a teleseism? It's not for seismological analysis at all. You should never, ever, 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 ever use web recorders to judge how big an event was, how long it lasted, how many events there were. No, you cannot. You need to use seismograms, spectrogram, and spectra plots to determine all of those things, guys. I'm telling you right now, web recorders should only be used for a very, very quick overview. Who cares whether they're big or small? But let's prove it. Let's just not listen to me blabber on about how some YouTuber could be wrong. Let's talk about it and let's show some proof in the seismic program swarm with data obtained from MCID. We will use this as an example station and I will show you that the professionals are not censoring anything. Number one, there'd be no reason to because nobody uses web recorders for seismological analysis. They use the, si the raw seismic data in a seismic program swarm or another seismic program as well. And number two, again, I'm going to show proof that the professionals are not censoring the data because this is called an auto scale feature. They, uh, the University of Utah basically uses the same exact program as a seismic program swarm. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same exact program. Actually, it's basically the same exact thing. Even the analysis helicorders that they show on there do have these same buttons as in the seismic program swarm, as I have seen, especially in the most recent YVO update where Michael Poland is showing the steamboat geyser eruption on the helicorder and he kind of points to it and you can tell it's basically the same exact program as the seismic program swarm. So we're going to take a look at this auto skill feature and how this is not professionals censoring data. One of my viewers brought this up to me and wanted to see this for himself. So here's the video right here. Now here we are in the seismic program swarm. Now I want to let you guys know while I'm opening this file, I'm not one of I, I don't bow down to the to the needs of the professionals or the YouTubers. Whenever I look at something, I look at it with no bias and I try to figure out everything there is to know about it. Otherwise, you're gonna be fooled by something, right? Right. Now there, are, I still do have some things that I do not like the, uh, the professionals doing. For example, the low threshold of reported earthquake events, especially during rapid fire swarms at Yellowstone Caldera, compared to the high threshold of reported events for earthquake swarms elsewhere, like Long Valley, even Mount Hood, which is currently seeing an earthquake swarm right now. Um, it's the reported count of earthquakes at Yellowstone is far lower than any other place in the United States, really, with a good seismic array. Long Valley's got a good seismic array. Mount Hood doesn't even have that great of a seismic array, but they're locating a good amount of small earthquakes as part of this rapid-fire swarm that is currently ongoing. But at Yellowstone, sometimes they do good at reporting events, and other times they only report like 5% of the earthquakes within any given earthquake swarm. And I've dealt with that a lot in the past. I don't know exactly why that is. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe they're shorthanded. I, I don't know, 
But I, I still am not happy about that. I wish they would do a little bit better in reporting events at Yellowstone compared to other areas, especially in California, Oregon, and Washington. Because California, Oregon, and Washington, they're pretty good at reporting events, especially during rapid fire swarms. They're pretty good at that. So, we're going to take a look at MCID and the Seismic Program Swarm of the magnitude 7.1 that occurred. Here, let me zoom in. And you will notice that this is called an auto scale feature, which is basically something that is automatically done, but you can turn it off. If you don't like it, if you don't like the professional centering the data to make it look smaller, then you can just turn it off, guys. But I really don't like people claiming this, especially when the people out there claiming this know that this is not true and know that it's an auto scale feature. And I'm telling you right now, it's an auto scale feature. Let's check it out. So first off, here's the magnitude 7.1 and many aftershocks uh, that occurred in California. Now notice the lines. Now let's use a line as an example, also known as a seismogram. Let's use right here, CSS 1330. Let's use that as an example right here. Notice how thin it is. Now we're going to go forward. Boom, 1330. It looks thicker, doesn't it? Let me go back. And this only goes uh, 12 hours back. There are 24 hours in this heli quarter right here. 24 whole hours. In other words, 48 lines. Now let's go forward. Whoops, sorry. I mean, let's go backwards. There we go. Forward, backwards. Forward, backwards. So notice how every time it sees the strong activity from the 7.1, it responds and gets smaller. This is not the professionals doing this. Now, I want to show you something. Let's go forward before the, or actually after. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's before or after. Whatever is seeing some strong activity on the heli quarter, it's going to respond with the auto scale feature. Now, if you don't like that, you can remove it in the seismic program swarm. Notice down here. In other, it says auto scale right here. Uncheck that. Press OK. All right. You want to see what it looks like now? All right. We're about to go back. This is what it looks like without the auto scale feature. Boom. Notice how it looks basically the same. I mean, the earthquakes do look a little bit stronger, but the overall amplitudes did kickstart the auto scale feature in the seismic program swarm. Notice how it is no longer affected. Notice that. That is because the University of Utah uses the same program as the Seismic Program Swarm, and there's an algorithm set for an auto scale feature. But I want you to notice something. Let's turn back on that auto scale feature. Let's go back down to where we were. Let's turn auto scale back on. Auto scale on. Press OK. All right. Now let's go back up. Boom. Notice how the auto scale kicked in, right? Now I want you to notice something. Check this out. Let's use an example spike, shall we? Just any spike anywhere. We'll use this electro or electric malfunction right here as sort of a gauge, right? Notice how it goes down to, I'm going to say, negative 787 amplitude count. Well, the thing that seismic um, amateurs and professionals do, they do not look at the webby quarters. For their analysis, they use seismogram plots, spectrogram plots, or spectra plots. Let's go to the seismogram plot, which shows amplitude on the left, the strength of any given signal. Notice amplitude, 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 showing the amplitude that is arriving from any given signal. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you about this feature right here. Watch everything in the background as I turn this scale forward. Boom. Boom. Notice that? Do you see how I can scale the helicorder? Notice that? Do you see it growing? Now, as you see it growing, you're probably like, oh my goodness, you're manipulating the data, Ben. No. Look at the maximum amplitude count up here, and look how the amplitude, which is the strength of any given event, which is what you use basically to judge magnitude and the strength of any given event, look, as I go down, it stays the same, doesn't it? Right there should prove that whoever is saying that they're purposely censoring data to make the things look smaller on the webby quarters is lying. And because this thing has been brought to their attention many times and they continue stating the same false information. Now, usually I would just let it go like I usually do. I just kind of ignore them and just let them do their thing. But it, it kind of ticks me off a little bit because they're making us look bad. The people who are actually doing actual amateur seismological analysis, it, you know, it doesn't make me happy. It really doesn't. But if they're willing to learn, you know, and turn around, then that's their choice. But they can keep doing what they're doing if they want. Now, 
Let's go forward, shall we? Let's use... Oh, yeah, we're going to use one of the spikes, right? Okay, this one goes down to about negative 755, right? So that was at 1236.30. So now we're going to go forward with that auto scale feature on. All right, 1236, uh-oh. 1236.40, where'd you go? 1236.40, there it is. Notice how the auto scale feature tur uh, turn, basically turned off, and it's still going down to 755, right down here. Okay, so we just showed you that this is not censoring. This is called an auto scale feature. And I'm probably going to have to do this video a few times in the future when it comes up again. But, you know, some people out there won't be happy that I'm making this video. But why? Just think about that for a second. Why would someone want the professionals to censor the data when this isn't even how someone would even censor the data? If someone wants to censor seismological data, they would have to completely take down the entire seismic array. You want to know why? Even a negative magnitude earthquake can show up many, many miles away on many stations at Yellowstone, actually, especially if it's a little bit deeper. It can, guys. So that means, like, if, let's say there's any strong activity that could lead to an eruption, right? They would have to take, if they wanted, I'm just saying, if they wanted to censor the data, they would have to take down everything. I'm talking about every station in the PB network and every station in the WY network and maybe even some stations in surrounding arrays in Montana, Idaho, and Utah. They would still have to take down as well because someone out there would still be able to pinpoint the location of any large earthquake event. So obviously we're not seeing that, right? So they're not censoring seismic data. Just wanted to put that out there because I monitor seismic data every day and I know for a fact they are not censoring anything, especially when you can, quote unquote, turn off the censorship. If you can turn off the censorship with a free seismic program, how in the hell is that censorship? Just, I'm just putting that out there. Sorry guys if I'm a little riled up. It's been a very crazy day today. Earthquake storm in Mount Hood continues and we learned that this is not censoring. This is called an auto scale feature. Let me go back one more time. Turn auto scale off. Now let's go back up. Notice how it doesn't change. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. Now let's go turn the auto scale feature back on. Notice how it changes. Notice how it changes. And notice how it changes. That's the automatic response of the auto scale feature in the seismic program swarm which the University of Utah does use. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I will always stand for the truth no matter where it leads. Why? Because the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. I know, I, I couldn't resist. I haven't said that quote in a long time. I used to say that in my older videos. I haven't said that for a long, long time. But it's true, and I'm out there for the truth, and I love squashing misinformation. And yes, misinformation does reside in places you least expect. God bless, guys. Have a great day.